Hey guys, back with a YouTube video. Oops, just realized the camera's a little bit crooked. There we go. Back with another video. Today it's going to be a video I've been redoing, and that is my Bowie knife collection that I've collected over the years. Now, those who seem to think that a Bowie knife is of one particular style, that's actually not true. There's been many, many variations of a Bowie knife over the past hundred years. Arkansas is very well known for it. And particularly, I like to put it this way, when people think of a Bowie knife, they generally think of something like this. Like a large clip point with a large S-shaped guard. But this isn't the only design the Bowie knife was known for. There were several different variations, like Arkansas in particular was known for this design. This is a classic coffin-handled Bowie knife. Very well known, Jim Bowie himself loved this particular design. He, fa he favored a coffin-handled, guardless design. And also, these were also even called large butcher knives. That's exactly what they were is at the time. Beautiful. Uh, next is another very similar one. This is one I got, got while I was in the Queen. Originally, I just bought the blade and I rehandled it, but I'm not very happy with how this handle turned out, so I do plan on rehandling this sometime. Uh, this is my very first Bowie knife that I made myself. I made this many years ago when I first started knife making. I made this out of an old truck, truck spring, and I even stamped my name into the handle. But yeah, that was my very first Bowie knife that I made myself. With a sheath that I made, but it, the sheath itself has seen better days. I plan on remaking this sheath as well. Uh, next is, oh, this one Edward's going to be, is going to like. I still have my Expendables replica of the Arkansas toothpick. Ain't that a beauty. Still sharp as the day I've got it. I've not used this thing except to show it off. Again, it's, it's really easy to see why Stallone loved this knife so much. That was just a beautiful design. Again, well known in Arkansas. And it is just basically a short sword. And I love that they even replicated the sheath just like the one in the movie. Ah, love that design. Gil Hicken does make some good stuff. And I love that he stayed true to the, the traditional design. And this one, Edward would also be surprised. This is my candy cane uh, timber rattler that my good buddy Edward gave me in one of the very first boxes that he gave me. I even clear-coated the handle and sharpened it up just a little bit, but I've not really used this thing because I love this design way too much. I love that it's got custom pins. And it's 2015, one of 600 made. And I love the sheath in this thing. And I love the traditional design, one of my favorites. It's just got some nice heft to it. If this thing wasn't so nice, I would probably use this. Now, none of these are going to be the best quality. Some of these I just bought because they were either so cheap or I loved the design or they were given to me. This is one of the ones that was given to me. Beautiful. Uh, next is one of the ones I bought myself. This is a Winchester Bowie knife. It's, it's made in China, but I love the design, which is the only reason I bought it. And I bought it really dirt cheap. I think I, like, I paid like $30 for this thing, which is pretty cheap. And I love the different colored handle, which is another one of the things I loved about it. And I love the blade design. Definitely one of my favorites. Just sucks this thing's made in China. But still, it's a Bowie knife, and it's what I like. Okay. Uh, next is another Bowie knife I picked up. This one in particular, I've still not found out who made this. I picked this up at a local pawn shop. It's a classic coffin handle with a saber grind, which is one of my favorites. A beautiful design in particular. And I've still yet to find out who made this, because this thing is way too well made to be a factory knife. Or, unless it was a very good factory knife that somebody took care of. The sheath itself is very well made. It's triple stitch. Signs whoever want, whoever bought this wanted to use it. And my buddy who ran the pawn shop basically told me an elderly gentleman pawned this and just never paid for it. So it became property of the pawn shop. And now it became my property because I bought it. 
beautiful knife, and I love that it's got several pins in the handle just to go to show the quality. And I do plan on taking this camping with me when I go camping next. This thing does make a heck of a good chopper. I've used it a little bit because I, I wanted to see the quality of it. It's full tang. It's got a guard. It's everything I like about it. So next time I go camping, I do plan on carrying this. Again, I just wish I could find out who designed it and who made it. So that's just a beautiful classic design. Alright, let's get those to the side. Uh, next, I guess I'll show this one off since this one doesn't have a sheet. This one is my Carville Hall Arkansas Toothpick. Still classified as a Bowie. Classic coffin handle design. This one was given to me by a very good friend of mine off YouTube. You know who you are. And I love this knife. I still got the display, the display for it, and it's right beside my other Carvel Hall. Beautiful. Made in the U.S. You just can't beat that. And next is my other Carvel Hall. This one is, again, one of my favorites. Again, made in the U.S. I mean, you just can't beat a USA-made Arkansas Bowie. It just sucks it doesn't say made in Arkansas, because that just really would be nice. You don't hardly find those anymore. And I love the mirror polish that this thing has got on it. That was well worth the buy. If I remember it, I bought this one at a local flea market. But still, just a classic design in general. Uh, next is another cheap Bowie knife that I picked up at a pawn shop. This one is just some cheap Bud K stuff that you can get. This thing used to have a small one, but I actually gave it away. But I kept it because I love the design. I do use this as templates for some of my designs. Still an overall classic, and I love that it's all blacked out, and it is somewhat sharp, but it doesn't hold an edge very well. But still, I love the design, which is the only reason I've kept it. Uh, next, ah, this is my other Timber Rattler that my good buddy JJ Jinx got for me for my birthday. And I love this one. This thing has just got some huge heft to it. Sucks this one's made in, uh, I think this one's made in Pakistan, actually, but it, still, I love the design. I just love the classic designs you don't see anymore, and this thing has got some heft to it. I do plan on probably using this, because this thing's got a heck of a thick blade, and it's got a nice handle on it, and it's got a nice thick brass guard. Everything you would see in a classic Bowie knife. I mean, that is just sick looking, and I love the sheath. It just sucks it's cheaply made, but heck, a sheath is better than no sheath. Thank you very much, Ed. Thank you very much, JJ Jinx. Again, I appreciate you'd be surprised that I still got those three Bowie knives. I got the one you got, those two you got me for my birthday, and I've got that one that you gave me in the very first lots. Ah, this one I got from my good buddy JR. This is a small coffin handle. Sadly, it's made in China, but I love the design, which is the only reason I've kept it. And I love how thick it is for such a small knife. Definitely make a heck of a boot knife. Beautiful design. Again, it just sucks it's made in China, but I still love it regardless. Uh, next is a Bowie knife that I rehandled recently. Those who watched the previous video before I deleted it, I asked, this one actually had a different handle. This one had more of a ring right here, but sadly, I wasn't very happy with that handle because I didn't like how it turned out, so I took that handle off and rehandled it in full tang and gave it three pins, exactly what it used to look like back in the day. And I love how that turned out. I mean, now that thing just looks more badass than it did before. Again, beautiful design. Again, I based this off Gunner's Bowie from Expendables. Ah, next is the very first Bowie knife I ever got that I didn't make. Sadly, though, it is a Pakistan. But when I first started collecting, I was doing a whole bunch of trading, and I didn't have very many knives at that time. And a friend of mine traded me this knife in exchange for a couple of items. If I recall, that video is probably still up available. And at the time, you got to think, I was a lot younger, and this was my very first large knife. And I felt like Crocodile Dundee. And if you hear that rattling, it's because the guard is rattling. Because once I actually got my all my knowledge together, and I actually found out different types of steels, I actually did use this a couple times. I chucked this at a tree just to see if it would bust, and it didn't. And I've used this a couple of times, hence why the guard is rattling, because I use this to chop with, because it's so cheap, I mean, what am I going to lose? But it's still my very first Bowie knife, and I'll still keep it in my collection, because it was the Bowie knife that I first got, that I didn't make. And this is still the original sheath. 
Again, it sucks it's made in Pakistan, but still, it was my very first Bowie knife. Again, this isn't particularly what people think of when they think of a Bowie knife. They think of just a classic clip point with a big guard and big handle. That's not exactly what a Bowie knife is. Ah, this one I remember because I do use this one. This is my old-timer charade Bowie that I got, that an uncle got me for Christmas a couple years ago. Sucks it's made in China, but I will admit, it's taken some abuse. I've used this quite a bit. When I do a lot of firework and camping, I use this for chopping up small branches, and I use all this for all kinds of stuff. And, and I've chucked this in the ground multiple times, and it has not chipped on me. It's rolled, but of course I resharpened it. So I will admit, it's taken some abuse, and I love the overall design. I love the Duralyn handles that it's got on it. And I love that they're jigged enough to where it grips right into your hand. I just wish this thing was made in the U.S. Because I would so carry this knife every day if it was made in the U.S. But I still love it because it was given to me by a relative. And I do use it from time to time. I just wish that the sheath itself was a lot better quality. This is just a cheap nylon sheath. I wish this thing was made out of leather. Which eventually I do plan on getting a leather sheath made for this thing. Because even though the knife may not be worth something, if, I want, if I'm going to carry something, I prefer to have it in a very good quality sheath so that way I know it won't slip or cut me. And another cheap Bowie knife I picked up is this Fantasy Type 1. I picked this thing up for $12 at a pawn shop. I figured, what the heck. It's a Fantasy Type Bowie knife. It's made in Pakistan, sadly. But still, I love the design. It's the only reason I bought it. And I will admit, it does have that charm to it from me being a knife maker. Eventually, maybe, who knows, I'll probably take this blade out and actually reuse the handle. But still, I love the design, and for $12, I couldn't pass it up. The sheath is still very cheaply made. Like I said, I will never carry this thing, but it'll stay in my collection because it's unique. Alright, getting into the last ones. Uh, let's see. Ah, first, I'll start with some of the smaller ones. This is a German one. This is a small German Bowie knife that I got from my good friend, Outdoors Addiction. He did a trade with me, and I still love this knife because, again, this still classifies as a Bowie knife, given what it is. I love the design. Again, it makes a good little camp knife, but I don't ever plan on using this because I love it way too much. Uh, next is an unknown Bowie knife that I picked up again at a pawn shop. All it has is this stamp of a, bra of a bass on it. And whoever made it knew what they were doing. It's got a full flat grind all the way around it, so it holds a very good edge. It's made out of carbon steel. And I love the handle. It's got nice finger grooves on it that I could use. So whoever made it knew what they were doing. Uh, last but not least, another one of the small ones. This one I got from my good buddy, Sean. Those who may remember. Again, this does classify as a Bowie knife. Beautiful. I love the sheath on this one. All right, getting into the last few. Jump back up to the largest one, and that is my Western Pat Dot Zero fighting knife. Again, given how large it is, this classifies as a Bowie knife. Beautiful. And next, of course, I can't talk about Bowie knives without talking about Buck. And that is my three 119s. I've got my 2021 119. Again, given how large this is, this is considered a Bowie knife. And I've got my 1972 to 1980 Bowie, 1980, 120, <laughs> sorry, with the original sheath. Sorry about the wind in the background, I can't really fix that. And last but not least is my other 120 from the same year. Beautiful condition. This one has a more modern sheath, which, like I said, a sheath is better than no sheath. Alrighty, that's all my Bowie knives. I had to delete that other video because I had missed a few, so... Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I look forward to collecting more. And I hope you guys enjoyed, and stay tuned for another video I'll be doing today. And as always, stay sharp, and keep collecting.